welcome to this episode of the Cooping Scapist TV show and podcast. I am your host, Christine Innes. I'm super excited to have this very beautiful soul joining us. Becca, welcome to the show, lovely. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here and letting me experience some of your magic. I've been really, really excited. Thank you. Oh, likewise. I look, honestly, I was like, I had a look. I always do like the night before. Who have I got on the show? And like this, you know, like when you just get that instant sort of like energy boosting, you're like, going, okay, this is going to be really good. I oh. could already feel it. So I was so excited. Um, oh. Everyone who follows the show knows I get super carried away and I can just... <laughs> like dive straight in, but I'll pause for a moment because I want you to introduce yourself to our audience, beautiful. Yeah, I'd love to. So I'm Becca Francis. I am a human design coach. I help generators and manifesting generators scale to six figures and I use human design and gene keys. That is my language. Um, I'm also a certified psychic medium as well, just kind of an aside. Um, but yeah, I've been in the human design realm since March 2020. I was in corporate before that in a very, very difficult corporate job, very toxic job. And I tried to leave that job for 12 years. I've had lots of different side hustles. I was a wedding planner. I sold jewelry. I sold dog products. I did everything I could to leave. Nothing worked. I found human design. Christine, I kid you not, within six months, I'd gone part time. And in less than a year, I'd left my job. And here I am. So it's the one thing that has literally changed everything for me. I'm going to love this conversation so much because I am a generator and I had somebody do my human design chart and it literally was this light bulb that went out as if to say why I make certain decisions or mm. I guess maybe just sort of worked out why things, I don't know, not why they've happened, but also, you know, why things may, like you're saying, like may not be working because that's just not, we're just going against the grain. And this is what I freaking love about human design. But also I love what you're bringing in is the fact that, you know, it's actually just tapping into that really full potential of a human being so that mm. they can just be in flow. And it is, it just makes things so easy. Absolutely. Absolutely. We spend, um, I spent my whole life, I found human design when I was oh, 48 I'd spent 48 years trying to fit in, trying to be like everyone else. I was very, very influenced by other people. Now I know that's my open head center. Um, and by the way, I love that you're a generator. I love talking to other generators. Um, I was just trying to fit in desperately and just kept coming up against roadblock after roadblock. And once I found human design, it actually gave me a label. Now, <laughs> I'd, a lot of people say, don't label people. They don't like to be labeled. That's not a good thing. For me, being labeled, quote unquote, labeled as a generator has been life changing because it's helped me understand who I am and be able to say, no, actually, this is this is how I work. I don't work like that. I'm not a projector. I'm not a manifester. I work and think and take action and make decisions as a generator. So that quote unquote label has been one of the most powerful things in my life, which goes against that kind of how we condition to think about ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the key things is like, you know, everyone's just like, well, how do you do it? Like that's the question I get asked so many times, obviously running multiple businesses, but mm -hmm. I didn't realize that I was tapping into, you know, like this zone of genius um, and like I'm a creative person. So and plus also I get bored so easily. So I have to have multiple things on the go. And mm -hmm. when I was told all these different things, I'm like, oh, that just all makes sense now. Like, yeah, I come in, I do it, but I need to also have a team around me. And I think when people can understand, I guess, their true essence, and especially when they go into business, then they can sort of work out, well, who they need to have around them. They can also work out, you know, even just the type of clients that they're probably going to be attracting as well and how they can get the best out of them. Exactly. And I love that you've brought that up. That's why I now work exclusively with generators and manifesting generators. And interestingly, the energy you've described is very manifesting generator. So I'd love to have a look at your chart one day, that, that kind of lots yeah. of things on the go. You sound like exactly like one of my managing clients. Um, 
but helping me, it has really helped my business to focus exclusively on generator types, the generators and managers, because we have so much power. Now, I'm not saying that the other types don't have power. We have a specific type of power, and that power has been suppressed by society, and we have been conditioned to use our power to fulfill other people's agendas. So we end up in corporate doing work we cannot stand, which frustrates us. That's one of our signposts that we're not in the right place. We're frustrated, we're exhausted, we're drained because we're being forced to use all this power in a way that doesn't light us up, is not creative, that we don't love to do. And I recognized that so strongly and it helped me understand why I struggled in corporate my entire life. I thought it was because I didn't like authority. I mean, I don't like authority, but that's a whole different story. It wasn't that. It was that I could not understand why I had to sit at a desk between nine and five and try and be interested in something that bored me to tears, absolutely bored me to freaking tears. And once I understood, it's not the time that I'm here, it's what I'm doing that's the issue. Because for a generator, when we're doing what we love to do, when it lights us up, we can do it for hours and hours and hours and hours. The signpost for a generator that you're doing the correct thing for you is collapsing in a happy heap at the end of the day. We can work to exhaustion, but not to burnout. That's a whole different whole different um, kind of can of worms. At the end of the day, if you feel satisfied, but exhausted, that's a signpost for a generator that your energy has been going in the right direction. And we are not taught that. In fact, Ra Uruhu, who founded Human Design, actually said it is for generators. It's for generator types because we are 70% of the collective. And he said he was a manifester. And he said, if I achieve nothing but waking up all the generators on the planet, the whole frequency of the collective will rise. Mm. And he he was an interesting character, really fascinating, but he would kind of get frustrated and say, I'm doing it for generators. Generators need to wake up. This is what will help humanity raise their consciousness. So, oh, I could just talk about this 24-7, Chris. No, I love it, though. (laughs) Because I can so relate to it. I mean, you know, we've both had the corporate career, you know, I did 22 years with it and I ended up with burnout and right. and it was not just the corporate things. There was a lot of personal stuff that was happening in mm. my life with it. However, now I didn't realize what was happening, you know, as I came out of all of that and then started the healing, but then sort of fell into this business. But then when you come back to the human design and like you're saying, it's, you know, not a lay like, uh, yes, I, yes, it is a label, but in a way for me, I see it like a roadmap, mm-hmm. like for where I, the potential that I can actually go and you, you, sort of like not having a restriction based on what society tells you. It's almost like lifting that off and just going, just go with it, just go with it because this is your roadmap. This is what you're meant to be doing. Exactly, exactly. And the more you awaken into it, because that's human design is just another tool. It's not a dogma. It's it's just a tool that we use. You awaken into it. You experiment with it. It's designed to be fun. I, I encourage my clients to see it as a real, really fun journey. Let's get curious about you. How do you operate in business? Have you been conditioned to push and hustle and just do it? Well, that's not how generator types work. We are very magnetic creatures. Things come into our world for us to respond to. And it's our sacral that does that responding. But even from children, we're conditioned out of it because for a sacral type, so a generator or a manager, our sacral mechanism is actually very logical. But we're taught to come out of that. We're pulled out of it, think it through, be logical. And we're pulled away from that response. And the generator response to something that lights their sacral up is actually very guttural. It's very vocal. It's, oh, oh, yes. Oh, I want to do that. Oh, oh, like this. And if it's a no or it's neutral, it's you kind of lean back. 
it's your sacral is very quiet. But if you imagine that in a school scenario, if we're going, oh, 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 no, shh, be quiet, shh. And we're continually told that that's not the right way to behave. So we lose that connection to our sacral. And when we lose the connection to our sacral, we flounder around and we're very, very open to being conditioned by what other people tell us we should be. Um, but the irony is if generator types, if generators and managers were able to wake up and able to really express who they are, the world would be a very different place. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not negating reflectors, projectors, manifestors. All of the types work beautifully together. It's like this beautiful jigsaw puzzle. But I talk about it from the sacral perspective because that's who I am. You know, that's what I'm here to do. But uh, yeah. but. Even things like um, a lot of generators and managers, because we can work for so long when it's something we love to do, we sometimes feel a little bit of shame around that. You know, we're labeled as workaholics and we work too much and why are you always working and find a work-life balance. I never understood work-life balance. I've never achieved it. For generator types, it's a work-life blend. Ra himself said, when we find our work as a generator, that's when we find our life. But mm. we're told that that's wrong. But for me, work is life. Life is work. And of course, there are boundaries we have to put in place that I'm still learning. But just removing that kind of shame of, well, I, I love working. I would work every day if I could. This is what lights me up. Even that, we can be conditioned to kind of hide that. So human design helps us say, well, I'm a generator. It's what I do. It's what I love to do. So, yeah, that permission, I think, is so freeing. So I hope that answered your question. No, I have an no. open head center, so I could just spiral off. I love that because I, it was interesting. So my son came around on Sunday and he said, oh, are you working today? And it's it's not a, a bad thing from him because he knows that I absolutely love what I'm doing. And like you're saying, I will work seven days a week. I actually did take Sunday off because I'm just like going, oh, you know, hang on, there's a few changes happening. Like I just need to have some downtime. Yeah. Um, but he will know that I do work seven days a week if I possibly could, because I love it so much. Like mm. I, it, it's like a natural high that you get, you know, because I'm like, going, oh my God, imagine what this could do for somebody like, yeah, with it. Um, so, and I do love the thought, the fact that you did say work-life balance, because I just really do not believe it exists, not even in corporate or regardless of what type you are. I don't think that there is a work-life balance because sometimes you have to do more work. Sometimes you can take time off, but it's just, you know, doing what lights you up. And if work lights you up, like, isn't that healthy? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, there, there is a balance and we're not, <laughs> we're so conditioned to use that word. There are boundaries that we have to put around that, that I'm still learning because we have to look after our own energy. Yeah. Um, but feeling like you said to your son, yeah, I'm working today. Isn't that great? Instead of, oh God, it's Sunday. I shouldn't be working. And yeah. what I used to do was kind of take my laptop off and kind of work in the corner like this. And my husband yeah. would say, are you working? I'd be like, no, no, it's Sunday. I'm not working. But now I'm like, yeah, I'm working. I'm watching TV. I'm having a coffee. I'm going for a walk. I'm doing all the things at yeah. once because that's who I am. That's my quote unquote label. And I love it. I oh, absolutely I love Oh, I love that you just said that because I literally, that's me. Like, you know, I, I had a bit of a sleep in this morning and I'm like, oh, well, that's what my body needed. You know, I get up, I do my, my morning routine, had a couple of coffees, you know, take the dog for a walk. And it's almost like it's a structured but unstructured day. Yeah, it's a blend. It weaves work and life yeah. blend in and out, which is, I totally agree, which is why I feel that I struggled in corporate because it was... Here's a little bit of life at the beginning of the day. Here's the work you don't enjoy. And here's another little bit of life. And it just, I got to the point where I kept saying to my husband, I don't understand this anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't recognize this way of working. I don't understand it. Um, and I can't really function inside of it. It got that bad. I was like, the times, Christine, I would sit in my office and I would literally hold on to the desk to stop me from tipping it over and walking out. Yeah. Because I just could not, the frustration, which is the sign for the generator that we're going in the wrong direction, the frustration was overwhelming. Mm. But as soon as I found human design, it clicked over and it's like, 
the energy just started to fall into place. But the energy of my job started to fall away. It was amazing. It literally, I lost that connection to my job and it just started to dissipate and just disappeared. And if I hadn't experienced that, I would have trouble believing it. Because people would say, I would listen to podcasts when I was in corporate. People would say things like, oh, you know, my business just fell into my lap. And I'd be thinking, I'll be on my keyboard going, <laughs> just fell into your fucking lap. Um, but when you find the right thing and when you give yourself permission to um, take action and make decisions in the way you're designed to, that's actually what happens. So I think the universe had to have me experience it before I could teach it to other people. Oh, I'm such a big believer in that. And it's also like just using those lessons now in such a positive way. Um, A really great friend of mine, and she's an amazing coach. And she said, you know, anybody who starts a business is part of the 1% club because it takes that, you know, a very unique person, that courage to be able to start a business. Like you can have the idea, but it's a really 1% of the population that has a business and goes with it. Mm. But then when you add on another layer of, there's a word that I used to struggle with, which was surrender and, you know, just allow what needs to be. And that's the good, the bad and everything in between to happen because that's the pathway that sometimes we need to go on, um, even though we don't like it at times as well. Yeah, exactly. And I love that that word surrender because um, I wish that had been my experience, but I held on to corporate, although I detested it for so long, the universe literally had to put its kind of foot on my neck and go, look, this is not working for you. You need to leave. The situation at work was very toxic, a very toxic female environment. And just to put so much pressure on me to the point where I had no choice but to find something that I could make into a business and leave. It was like, I, you have no choice, Becca. We are going to make you so uncomfortable that you are going to have to find something. Um, so I, I, a lot of people have that experience of surrender and I'd love to say it was mine, but it was just, um, I just got so uncomfortable and so desperate. I didn't know which way to turn, which forced me to find something. So when human design kind of literally dropped into my lap, it was like a light bulb went on. It was a very interesting experience. So I'm a six two in human design. So I, I have six, six lines have very distinct life phases. We have three life phases. First from birth to 30, we have very big experiences. You know, I got married young. I had a very narcissistic, toxic marriage. I traveled the world. I did all sorts of things in those first 30 years made continual mistakes that people would point out as mistakes. Um, In the next 20 years, we go into what we call on the roof. So you kind of ease up, your foot gets taken off the gas pedal and you look at why have all these big experiences happened to me. And the third phase, they say starts from around 50. For me, the day I hit 50, everything changed. It was like literally the day, and I'm now in that third phase of teaching, from those quote unquote mistakes, which are not mistakes. Six lines are designed to have very big experiences in those first 30 years in order to learn from them. But society says, oh, the mistakes, you know, you made the wrong choice, you made a mistake. And that's freeing too. So I'm like, thank goodness I had all those experiences because now I can help other people through those. Thank goodness I had multiple failed businesses because now I can help people who are experiencing the same thing. So Mm. I love all of that because I think the biggest thing that you know and you and I've had very similar experiences you know like massive big things have happened in both of our lives and we get so consumed because society goes yes you failed and then you live with this shame and guilt Mm. and that shame and guilt actually stops you then from moving even forward and even seeing them as a lesson what are some of the things that you did to sort of I guess release that shame and guilt you know, mm-hmm. to be able to now step into where you are? Mm, oh, that's a great question. So it was human design combined with gene keys that really helped me shift that. So you're so right. I'm so glad you've said that. I felt, and I got a big shiver when you said it, 
the shame and guilt of having made all these quote unquote mistakes in the first 30 years, very public mistakes. A divorce is a very public mistake. Everybody gets to, you know, all your dirty linens aired and, you know, lawyers get to kind of sort through it. It's just horrific. Um, so I lost a lot of trust in myself, a lot of trust. I didn't think I could make a decision about anything. But then when I understood, when I found human design and I understood, okay, my, the way I make decisions in human design is emotional. I'm a very emotional being, but I've always been told you're too sensitive. You cry too easily. Um, this is embarrassing. Don't cry in public. People are going to think I've made you cry. Stop crying. La la la. On and on and on. Even in corporate, I was told to take the emotion out of my work as a manager. And all of a sudden understanding I'm an emotional authority. This is how I make decisions was like a complete light bulb. I need my emotions, you know, to train as a psychic medium. I have to be in touch with my emotions and all through my life, because I was too much for people. I was too emotional. People had said, no, that's we, we don't want to deal with that. Like, stop crying. Stop this. Stop that. So that was a big light bulb for me. Understanding that I don't make decisions on the spot. That's wrong for me. I, I was very, um, I had a very people pleasy energy. So if someone asked me to do something, I would agree to it so that I wasn't left out in the cold. Now I know it takes me some time to ride my emotional wave to make a decision. The other thing that helped me was my gene keys. So gene keys, just briefly, are a different way, a more nuanced, more feminine way of looking at the gates in human design. One of those gates is our vocation and our vocation is our zone of genius. And when I started contemplating that gate, the shadow of that gate is wherever it's placed in your chart is um, your greatest challenge. The greatest challenge you always struggle with. And when I looked at that greatest challenge, <laughs> I felt so called out. I felt like somebody was reading my mind because it was my biggest challenge. And for me, it's exclusion. So what I'd done in corporate with all these toxic relationships with women, because it had happened throughout my life, I'd started to exclude myself from female relationships before I could get hurt. Now, I'm not saying it was all my fault, but I saw my part in that. I would pull away and exclude myself so that there was no chance of me being rejected. And then other women would see that as well as well. What, who does she think she is? You know, why does she think she's so special that she's not coming to morning teas or she's not coming to, you know, social drinks after work? So understanding that was a huge light bulb and being able to take responsibility for my part in it. And then the gift, so the opposite of that, my zone of genius is intimacy. So now I have a business where, I'm, and I've just come off a coaching call with my generators and managers, we are very intimate about what is going on in their business. How much are they charging? How is their How are their programs being structured? What's going on with their mindset? So coming from a place of excluding myself from female relationships to now being in a position where we get very emotionally intimate in our coaching sessions is my zone of genius is ironic, but then it's supposed to be because our zone of genius is the complete opposite to our shadow. So I think those are the two things, understanding my authority and understanding my gene keys were just massive, massive light bulbs for me. Yeah. Yeah you have literally just said my story like so <laughs> much so and, and like I get that like I've been through two divorces and it is it's almost like you're stripped bare like you know standing there and people are just looking at you and pointing fingers um with it but then when you I, I guess in order to heal you need to feel and I think that's one of the biggest things that so many people you know who go through anything like we don't want to feel we try to numb the pain but the only way to get through it all is to feel all the emotions and I was like you I was told that I was too emotional you know in every aspect and you know I would go through a sliding scale like one minute I'm happy one minute I'm crying but I cry when I'm happy I cry when I'm sad too <laughs> um you know and people are looking at me going what's going on <laughs> but the biggest lesson that I learned is that I have to feel everything and it was almost like coming out the other side and just actually learning what those emotions were mm -hmm. 
and getting in touch with that. And I think so many people who are sitting in corporate right now, we get numb because we're told you do not show emotions. You literally go in, you're in this concrete jungle with it and it's like suppressing your feelings. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Putting them in a box, suppressing them. I used to cry in my car before I went into work. I would sit in the bathroom and cry and I would cry on the way home (laughs) because I kept, I had to be this sterile um, representation of a person in corporate in order to function. And when I came to human design and I understood my energy I, on the advice of one of my coaches way back when, my very first coach, she said to me, bring your energy into the office. You keep leaving. It makes me emotional. Think about it. Oh, um, you're leaving yourself at the door all the time. So you're cut off from who you are. And so I bought um, essential oils into the office. I bought Oracle cards in. I started opening the windows. I bought a plant, which I then killed, but that's a whole other story. Um, but... And I started to share the essential oils with my team. My, my close team I got on very well with. They loved them. We would pull an Oracle card every day. And what started to happen was people in the wider office, these women that I'd always had an issue with, started lining up at the door of my office to get a hit of essential oil in the morning. And that was astonishing to me because it made everyone's life much better. It made the energy in the office much better. People would say, even the guys in the office who would pretend not to be interested would say, oh God, it smells like a spa in here. Like that actually smells pretty good. And once I started to bring my energy into the office, that's when my job literally started to fall away and everything fell into place. It was really uh, astonishing is the word. I would just describe it. And it was fast as well. Yeah, I love that so much. And I think um, like what I teach my clients is that what you were told you were too much of a kid is literally what you're meant to be doing. Just, um, yeah. And it's it's funny how we are, you know, I, you, you kept using the word conditioned and I really love that word because I think that's what happens is that, you know, our parents only know so much, so they do the best that they possibly can. You know, schooling taught, teaches us so much and, you know, where that was at you go into a workplace and your managers only know a certain way so you are then conditioned by multiple people however you're not ever taught to express you and to allow that to come out however it is Mm. yeah it's amazing what goes in and and like you say I don't I never I had an incredible childhood my parents I wouldn't blame them for anything, but it's just knowing what we know now, we do things differently. I remember my mum saying to me when I was very young, oh, you're not friends with girls. You're only friends with boys. Like you get on really well with boys. And that stuck from that day because what she was saying to me unknowingly was they are your girls are not safe playing with boys. That's your place of safety. And so I got that message from very early on that I didn't really very, that I didn't function very well in female relationships. And that's not on my mum. That's, Mm. you know, there's a lot of things that have happened since. Um, But I put a post up just today, a very vulnerable post to say, after four, four years I've been out of corporate, I've isolated myself from female relationships and that needs to change. So now I'm reconnecting with old friends and trying to build new relationships with women outside of my clients um but it's hard it's hard so many layers of of conditioning yeah absolutely I think um you know when I I I got sick it sort of allowed me like I'm such a big believer now that the the universe gives you three signs it's the the feather which is that little tickle sometimes we never hear it um then you get the brick on your foot and you're like oh my god that hurt like you know what it is or you get the Mack truck and I've had the Mack truck multiple times where it like literally puts you on your backside you know with it but I see that as a blessing and you know like I can see all the good things that have come from it but when you are in that Mack truck moment it is so difficult to then I guess be surrounded by people who can be able to help pull you up 
have you experienced that yourself? Like sort of like you're in that moment and you just don't know where to turn to or who to even reach out to, who to listen to, get that guidance from? Yes, definitely. I think there are there are two points in those first 30 years, that that phase one of my sixth line, um, one point where I was, I realized that my marriage was not going to work. And I remember where I was. And I remember that was one of the loneliest times of my entire life. But I had to dig deep. I had to make a decision and decide what was going to happen. And there was also a time um, not long after uh, my parents lived in Spain. So I took the kids and went out there for a couple of weeks just to get some space. And I remember being stood on top of a mountain on my own in the sun thinking this is a really pivotal moment. I felt really felt like I was being recharged. Um, so yeah, the first time I think I was connecting into for the first time, the fact I had some autonomy and I was sovereign and I had a decision to make, I didn't have to accept it. And the second time I feel like it was the universe because I felt so depleted that just stood in that sun. I can still feel it and remember it, which is so clearly, which is why I think it was one of those pivotal moments. Um, but I'm learning now to how to reach out to other women for help. And even saying it, I'm like, oh, it's still like, oh. Yeah. Um, but I have a very, very close friend who left my team not long after I left. We both started our own businesses. Um, and I'm learning how to be very honest with her. Um, but it's hard. I'm not going to say it's anything else with women for me. It's hard. But that's why these conversations are good for me. Like being held in a space like you're holding it for me is so valuable to me. And I don't um, underestimate that. And I think that's why I have this undercurrent as emo of emotion as I'm talking, because it's a vulnerable, vulnerable yeah. space. But I have to keep putting myself in these spaces. Yeah, I, look, I can completely relate. I'm very much the same. A lot of my clients become my friends because they've obviously gone through a journey. But for me to put myself out there to make new friends, it's very hard for me because um, the people go, oh, you're such an extrovert. Like, yeah, I am, but I'm also an introvert too. Like I do love mm -hmm. my own time and, you know, I, I guess I, I value that so much more now. I think what you're offering to women especially – is so important not only to learn their gifts but also to learn you know that pathway that they can undertake I think it is such a beautiful gift that when we can start to learn more about ourselves but also to when you combine business and life um, I think you need people like yourself and that's why I think what you're doing is absolutely amazing. Thank you and I'm really glad you brought that up because um I've, I've become very vocal on Instagram about the fact that particularly in the spiritual business space, what we're taught and what I was taught at the beginning is as long as you're magnetic enough and you're enough in alignment enough, you'll be magnetic to the right clients and you'll earn a squillion dollars. That is not true. And it's taken me a few years to realize that. And now it makes me quite angry, to be honest, because when that doesn't work, then the business person blames themselves. Oh, well, I'm not in alignment enough. I just need to be more zen. I'm not magnetic enough. There must be something wrong with me. So what I uh, coach my generators and managers is it's 5D and 3D. You've got to have the masculine and the feminine. The 5D, what, you know, there's someone in my course who does um, Akashic Records, for instance, beautiful 5D work. But now she's learning that that 3D business strategy the marketing, the sales, the getting leads, the lifeblood of your business is essential. And it's not that she can't make her business work, it's that she hasn't been taught those essential strategies that underpin. So we need that 3D and the 5D. And I get so angry. I do. I get angry when people blame themselves for not being magnetic enough. Well, there is, that's 50% of the story. That's why it's not working. Yeah. Yeah, I love that so much because I look, I, I've worked with multiple different coaches. What I've learned um, is that I need somebody who is going to be able to help with the systems and processes because like that was my corporate career. So I know I have a a pull against it. Like I just don't like going back into it. Mm -hmm. However, there are key fundamentals that you need to do in your business. But you also need to not be restrained so much that it actually stops your creativity. 
because there are some coaches out there that will just go, it's system process, this, this, and this, and this. But that actually, for somebody like me, will actually restrain my creativity and actually stop my business from growing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah, it's so important that and that that's what I teach with with my group is that sacral activation. So we look at human design and gene keys, sales and marketing, scaling and sacral activation. What is going on in your sacral? Because that's your 5D. And then what's going on? How are we getting leads in? That's your 3D. So it, we're always blending those. Today, in a, in a coaching session, we were looking at um, processes for getting leads into your business, the lifeblood of your business. But when you're doing that, what's going on in your sacral? How are you responding? How are you making decisions about it? Because we need both. Too much, yeah. we lean too much into the 3D or too much into the 5D, we're out of balance. And when our business is out of balance, that's when our income is out of balance as well. Oh, I love, it. I could literally talk about this so much. I think we need to get you back and we should just, talk about that aspect because like you're saying it oh my god I can resonate so much with it like you know and you know I hear people all the time talking about you know um your bank account represents your energy and I'm thinking well hang on a second that's not necessarily true because like I think I've got a great energy but maybe my bank account may not represent that at that point in time but it could also be that my bank account's so full but my energy is so low and you're like, hang on a second, it just does not, yeah. So yeah. I think we'll, let's get you back and let's talk about that because I think that's a really key thing for anybody, you know, learning more about themselves but also learning about business. Mm -hmm. Um, I would love to just ask you how, like what are the different offerings that you have within your business for people to work with you? Mm -hmm. So my focus, the only way to work with me right now is six figure sacral. So for generators and managers who want to scale to six figures, and I take you through sales and marketing, scaling, human design and gene keys and sacral activation. Um, but it's designed to get you um, answers quickly, not quick fixes that don't last, but get you answers quickly. There are not videos that last an hour or an hour and a half. They're quick, snappy videos but the important thing is our community. We have this mastermind community of entrepreneurs who are supporting each other. Um, so I've designed it to be a lively community rather than just kind of a cheerleading community. So yeah, yeah. six figure sacral is the way to work with me at the moment. Yeah. And how is, do you have a way for people to work out what their human design sort of element is? Mm, yeah. There's lots of different websites, but the best one is jovianarchive.com. J-O-V-I-A-N-A-R-C-H-I-V-E, jovianarchive.com. And then you can get your free chart there. It's very easy. Amazing. Amazing. Well, I like, I just love what you're doing. I like, honestly, I like this conversation has lit me up so much. So I am so grateful for you. Before we go, I want to ask you five questions that we've been asking all of our guests this season, um, just so that we get to know you just on a little bit more of a personal note. So if you're ready, we can go through them. Okay. Okay, okay cool. If you've got spare time, would you prefer to curl up with, and watch a movie or read a book? Movie. Scary movie. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't do scary movies at all. <laughs> no, I have not. I was literally watching SUV the other night and – I was like, it was after seven o'clock and it was going dark. I'm like, I've got to quickly close the window. Like I was just like, I can't do it. So <laughs> I must say, I've just come back to reading again because I love reading in, and, and I, when I want to kind of get myself out of my business. So I've just read Fourth Wing and I've started reading Iron Flame for anybody that's oh, into those. I love it. Oh, I love it. I love it. So, um, Oh, the other question I would love to know is that if you were going on a beautiful holiday, would you prefer to travel by boat or plane? Oh, plane, 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 yeah. plane. I used to be a flight attendant for years oh. and I'm a plane nerd. I literally, I watch YouTube videos of people reviewing first class and business class. Like I just, I love that. Yeah. yeah. Planes every time. Obsessed. Yeah. In the morning, are you a coffee or a tea person? Ah, this is interesting. Uh, I gave up caffeine in January um, and I gave up for four months and I started drinking it again a week ago and I love it. I can't leave it alone. So coffee, 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 coffee. Oh, yeah. yeah. I have to, like, it's do not talk to me. 
Um, so thank goodness I live by myself because it's do not talk to me before <laughs> I have a cup of coffee. Um, but even my dog, she just knows like, oh, mom hasn't yeah. had a cup of coffee. Isn't so that's... <laughs> 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 um, yeah. If you were having a dinner party and you were able to invite one person from either the past or the present, who would it be? Oh, one person would have to be Elvis. I've been obsessed with Elvis since I was a kid. I actually used to think he was my dad. And I don't know what my actual dad made of that, but I don't know why. Um, but um, just just obsessed, just obsessed. I made it over to Graceland a few years ago and it was incredible and uh, went to see the Elvis movie about 10 times. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I'd have to yeah. be Elvis. Yeah, I'm actually going to get my VA to put together everyone's answer from this and just like do a diagram of what that dinner oh. table would actually look like. I think oh. it'd be really cool. <laughs> um, and the last question I would love to um, ask you is that if you could describe yourself in one word, what would it be? Oh, brave. I love that. Yeah. I get that from you yeah. so much. Right. Yeah. 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 I, I do adore you. I love what you're doing and everything about you. And I just want to say massive thank you for being on the show today and sharing parts of your story and your gifts with us. So welcome. I've had the best time. I honestly could talk about this 24 seven. So yeah. it's, a, it's a good job. You've got some boundaries around it. <laughs> I've had a wonderful a good, time. Thank you. For good, we are going to get you back and we're going to dive in. I think the money part is actually going to be an amazing mm -hmm. conversation. So I'd be really love to have you yeah. back and yeah, to I get you to. on the show. Yeah. Um, for those who have watched today, thank you so much. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, leave your comments below and make sure you follow us. And we're going to pop all the details below in the comments, how you can reach out to Becca um, and just learn more about how to scale your business, but also to be more true, authentic to yourself as well. So remember to live life to the fullest every single day. Love and light to you all.